everyone, and welcome to Life Questions. I'm your host, Bill Harris. There is so much going on in our world today, a deadly pandemic, political turmoil, racial unrest, an uncertain economy, and high unemployment. How do you make sense out of it all? Well, for answers, we recommend that you turn to the Word of God. And it is for that reason that we have invited a few ministers of the gospel to answer your questions about life. I want to introduce them to you at this time, and they include Pastor Ted Bible of the St. Mark's United Methodist Church here in Lima, followed by Pastor Brandon Green of Celebration Church, also here in Lima, and then Pastor Jason Goss of the Wapak Church in Wapakoneta, and Pastor John Maynard of the Family of Faith United Methodist Church, also Pastor of the Liberty Chapel, the Liberty Chapel Church in, uh, here in uh, Lima as well. Now, we want to welcome you gentlemen to our show. We're happy to have you with us today. And I guess the first thing I want to do is turn to a question that we got from one of our viewers that well, I think will hopefully set the pace for our discussion. There's a woman in my neighborhood, she says, who is very hateful. I want to reach out to her in love, but she and I have very different thinking when it comes to politics, <laughs> lifestyle, and more. How can I be a witness to her without accidentally saying something that could cause a divide? And uh, you know, many people are walking on tiptoes these days for mm -hmm. fear of you know, uh, hurting somebody's opinion or sure. feelings about something because we're all so divided. What do we do here in this, in this climate? Pastors, what do we do? Well, I think the first thing is do is not talk about politics. <laughs> That's so true. You know, as pastors, we talk about religion, obviously, mm -hmm. but you know, we need to it, it, that's a hot topic, so why bring it up? You know, if it comes up in conversation, it's very easy for us just to say, you know, I think we have different opinions. Let's just move on from that. You know, why, 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 why try to com be combative yeah. with that particular issue? Mm -hmm. You know, if you know where the other person's at, there is nothing you're going to say that's going to change your mind. Right. Likewise, there's nothing that yeah. they're going to say that's sure. going to change yours, yeah. mm -hmm. so don't even go there. Yeah. So that, that's my first suggestion, is avoid the conversation about politics. You know, I totally believe that you should keep, just keep it basic and kill them with love. Ah. I mean, my, my mom taught me that when I was little. If someone doesn't like you, kill them with love. Mm. And isn't that what Jesus does? Yeah, yeah. Well, that's what John 13 says, that, you know, they should know us by our love, how we, yes. how we treat one another. You know, what is our fruit? How do, you, how do you show her patience? How do you show her kindness? How do you show her gentleness? Mm -hmm. That should be what she sees, mm -hmm. and uh, that will help you win her over. In essence, you're trying to win her heart. Pastor Jesus said, you know, we're supposed to love our neighbors. We're yeah. supposed to pray for those, you know, who are nasty to you. Yeah. You know, this was a really heated, divisive election cycle. So could you consider that perhaps maybe your really large signs that you had in your yard might have been a little off-putting. <laughs> you know, I, I think it's like common sense needs to come right back around. Sure. Start by being a good neighbor. Make sure your exactly. yard's clean. Make sure your house looks nice. Be helpful. Be respectful. But at the end of the day, people want to see a sermon. They don't want to hear your sermon. Yeah. How did we get so uptight to begin with? Where did this come from? I think it came from... Uh, politics, a lot of it, mm -hmm. politics tends to drive, especially if you look in the last four years, has driven our culture. Mm -hmm. And so um, we've allowed it, and social media, of course, uh, all that. Yeah. and so we've allowed that, and, and this is the danger, we've allowed that to take the front seat mm -hmm. instead of living by the Word of God. Um, mm -hmm. it, it's just one of those dangers that we live in. If I have a political slant to be progressive, mm -hmm. then I tend to have a progressive biblical slant. Well, the, I should have the biblical perspective first. That should influence how I see the world. Yes. The problem is now we're taking what I believe in politics or what I believe the world should be, and I'm, I'm trying to apply that to the Bible, and I'm trying to apply that to my way of life, yeah. and that's a pretty dangerous place to be. Letting the tail drag the dog. Then. Correct. So to speak. Okay. Well, and although you said, you know, politics the last four years, I think the reality is it's a 24-hour news cycle that goes beyond the last four <laughs> years. Yeah. You know, because, you know, whatever the hot topic is, you know, they're going to, they're going to inflate it. They're, they're driving ratings. You know, they want to just stir the pot. They're going to tell whatever side of the story they feel that their maybe their agenda is is directed towards. And that doesn't help matters. Right. That doesn't help and, matters. And either. you know, we all have different opinions, and it seems like we all want everyone to take our opinion. 
And it used to be that, that we, we could have our opinions, we could talk about it, and we walked away as friends. But right. the, the hatred has come in so much mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. it's my opinion, that's all that counts, yeah. and, and just, you know, you got to accept it. Yeah. And that's not the way it should be. Yeah. The polarizing worldview, you know, from whatever station you're watching, has really fueled the fires of just division. So I, I tell our people all the time, I'd rather choose people over politics. Yes. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, politics, you know, it, it's going to change. The opinions are going to evolve. But, you know, people are, are who are really important. Jesus came because he loved people. Yes. I think that's something yeah. that we have to prioritize. And just remember to be respectful. Yes. You know, I may not have to, you know, agree or subscribe to your, you know, viewpoint, but let's, let's try to be respectful, be kind. Right. Yeah. And, and I think on top of that, it's, I expect as a Christian, sometimes we, we see people that expect a non-Christian to behave like a Christian mm -hmm. and that's not going to happen. But yet we expect, Hey, you, you should value life. You should act in this way. And you, well, if they don't have the same values I have, they're not going to act that way. Yeah. So why would I ever think that they'll be convinced to listen to me. Now you're leading me into my next question because I want to ask if, if we are supposed to be showing the light, it seems like that this negative environment that we're discussing is a prime opportunity for the church to step, step forward and show its leadership. Mm -hmm. Am I correct about that? Mm -hmm. Am I you're making a correct. bad assumption? You're right. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, why aren't we? <laughs> why why we, we, we're taking a back seat and we're saying these things quietly, but where's the leadership? And, and let me put one thing on top of it, Pastor, just one thing on top of it. When you look, have you ever seen that, uh, that little chart that talks about the, um, the seven pillars of society and mm -hmm. it names church, government, and, you know, different other things in society, and the church is in there. None of them are as powerful as Jesus declared that the church would be because right. he said that the gates of hell wouldn't even be able to come up against the church. Right. Right. There's not another institution in society right. that, can, that can make that claim. So why aren't we exercising that power with the love that you're talking about, the love you're talking about, and showing leadership? Where are we? I think there's a whole lot driving it um, with intimidation. And, you know, ego is at the forefront of this as well, yeah. <laughs> driving conversations. And um, the fact is Jesus called us something. He called us salt and light. Yes. And the world's demanding in this climate. Who's got the salt? Pass the salt. You know, we need some salt here. We need right. some solutions. We need some people, you know, with a clear head, yeah. uh, you know, focused message. And so uh, if we, you know, the word of God says God hasn't given us a spirit of timidity. If we allow that, you know, push back from the spirit of this age, because I don't believe it's necessarily flesh and blood, you know, but it's really has to do with, you know, this world system trying to keep the church at bay, trying to intimidate the church. And I'm not saying be obnoxious, but I am saying, you know, speak the truth, walk in love and you know, make a proud display of it in, in a really classy way. Right. <laughs> you know? I, I, I'd argue that same vein, but I'd argue that we have a lot of people who wear the label of a Christian, but don't act like a Christian. There's no fruit. And so the salt has lost its savor. Mm -hmm. And the problem is the true church has not stood up and said, instead, you've got other people who are saying, I'm a Christian and they're the ones being the voice, if you will. Mm -hmm. And so the world is seeing this voice that they think is Christianity or they think is a Christian picture. And it's not. It's right. not the true mm -hmm. message of the gospel. Yeah. Well, typically when you see no fruit, that's basically because there's no root. And um, if there's no roots... The, the, then certain people who are calling themselves Christians need to avail themselves of, of the true gospel, wherever, you know, because there's all kinds of shades and compromises with the gospel these days that are different than the pure gospel. Well, Go Jesus ahead, told us you know, that uh, the harvest is plenty, but the workers are few. Yes. Yeah. And that's the problem now. Everyone's okay if they're in the church but they don't want to go outside the church, outside of their the comfort, comfort zone. zone. Yes. And, and we need to push that and because, I mean, people will stand up in church and say hallelujah and, and praise God, but the minute they walk out, they just close their mouth. And w we are just one person. Mm -hmm. Imagine what it would be if the whole church would walk out into the community. Yeah. 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 I mean, that's, we, we have to come back to the Word of God. You know, what, what, what I've discovered over the last few weeks 
we, we did a sermon series on 1 Corinthians, Paul's writing to the churches in Corinth over issues, disgruntlement, you know, confusion about the teachings. Now we're in 1 John, John's doing the same thing. Hmm. And so, so the, the problems that the church has with culture is nothing new. Correct. It's been influenced for yeah. thousands of years. Yes. Yeah. You know, and so what, I, what I've discovered, which shouldn't really be something I discovered, but the reality is, is that, you know, the, the four Gospels that Jesus, you know, the, where we find Jesus, you know, in the teachings, you know, that's where we discover the teachings. Mm -hmm. Everything after that is the church dealing with Jesus' teachings. <laughs> Trying mm -hmm. to apply it. Trying right. to apply yeah. it. You know, struggling with it, dealing yeah. with it. So what we need to be teaching on Sundays is the Gospels. Go back to the root of it. Mm -hmm. Teach Jesus Christ what he taught, you know, how you apply it. The love. Mm -hmm. Love your neighbor, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and the church isn't doing that. And part of the other problem, the other side of it, especially then during this last year, is, well, we're not allowed to go talk to anybody. <laughs> we right. have to wear a yeah. mask. We can't go yeah. out. You know, we're yeah. We feel yeah. restricted, even though we shouldn't. We kind of feel restricted. And so that's, that's the other difficult challenge at this point. But, you know, I, I know a lot of the churches, you know, they, they did online things and they had, mm -hmm. they had Facebook. We, we, we did drive-in services. Yeah. And... The first, the first one we had, I thought, if, if only four, four cars show up, I'll be happy. We had like 40. 40? Yes. And, and every week it, it grew. And some things tried to keep us from having it. We started at 1030, and every time at 1030, a train would go by and blow its whistle forever. <laughs> and, and, you know, but you just have to be patient. But you've got to be able to deliver the word when it's needed. You know, a lot of it has to do with uh, the narcissism that's in the world has affected the church. Yes. Yeah. So everything is, what about me? How is this going to affect me? Yeah. Is your children's ministry going to meet my needs? Is your worship, you know, just like I hear on the recordings, you know? And the fact is, Jesus didn't call us to be church attenders. We're to make disciples. That's, yeah. that's the yeah. legacy he left for us. And that's where we're uh, really missing it. Making disciples reaching people with our story, let it impact their life, and then, you know, duplicate that process. And so we can really see fruit in the church. And don't, don't get me wrong, I love to see progress, but I think we have come too far and we have too many things that we can do on Sunday rather than come to church. Sure. And it used to be that you came to church to find out what was going on inside your community mm -hmm. because, you know, that, that's the only time you got together. And you came, you did that, you worshiped, you, and, and you, you loved one another, and you went home, and you had dinner at home. Now, I'm not saying I, I don't like going out to eat. I do. I love to go out to eat. But we got to get back to the basics. Mm -hmm. Very good. we got to take a break. When we come back, I want to ask you, you touched on the fact that um, this recent, most recent election cycle has had a tremendous impact on what we're talking about here, you know, the divisiveness in life. I want to talk about whether or not politics should be playing a major part in the church. Should we be announcing that we're Democrats or Republicans? Does that matter? When we come back, we want to deal with that and more. So stay with us. We'll be right back. I promise you. Don't go away. There's still a lot more discussion to come on this episode of Life Questions. But first, do you have a question for a future show? Email it to lifequestions at WTLW.com or call us 419-339-4444. You can also suggest pastors you feel would be a good fit for our panel. Again, send your question ideas and pastor suggestions to lifequestions at WTLW.com. Now back to the discussion. All right, we are back and um now that we're back, we want to mention the fact that, uh, as we said, we, we want to talk about politics in the church. You mentioned the scripture earlier in our discussion, Jesus referring to Christians that the world will know them by their love. Right. And I would say the world will know them by their love and not their political affiliation. Correct. Because that's some of what, some of what is uh, creating some friction yeah. and divisiveness, wouldn't you say? Yeah, I, and I love this verse. Uh, it's Joshua chapter 5. And so Joshua is getting ready to go into Jericho and he runs across the Lord's commander. And this is what Joshua says. Are you for us or are you against us? And the Lord's commander says, neither. I'm on the Lord's side. Yes. And so I think 
That's where really as a Christian it should be. I'm not for one side. I'm not for this side. Mm -hmm. I'm for God's side. Yeah. And so that if I can if I can remember that I'm for God, then I can deal with the political. Yeah. And, and it's not that I think a person shouldn't vote sure. and shouldn't have their favorite candidate. That's true. They should. But I like the way the late Billy Graham used to do it. With him, it didn't matter who was in the White House, what party. He went in there for that president's soul. Uh -huh, he went right. in there, yep. mm -hmm. there to be a right. witness for the Lord. He wasn't trying to get photo ops to right. make himself look good and that kind of thing. Uh, what do you think about that? Is Emma off base in saying no, that? No, I think you're absolutely right. I mean, certainly in my church, I'm sure in every one of these churches represented here today, that there's people sitting in our pews who, who have a different political slant or opinion mm -hmm. than the person sitting in the row in front of them, behind them, mm -hmm. person beside them. And so as a pastor, if you stand up there and start taking a, posi a certain position, then that's obviously saying to that person, well, I'm not, you're not for me. I, you know, we're yeah. obviously not going to be able to get along, so maybe yeah. I just need to go someplace else. Right. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know, and that, we don't want that kind of church. We want a body of right. people that is representative, right. you know, of, of the full community yeah. That, yeah. that we're serving. Right. And so we have to walk, mm -hmm. you know, the middle. Now, there, granted, there's going to be some hot topics come up, sure. you know, that you're going to want to probably, you know, share your view on. But again, you know, we, we need to be on God's side, yeah. you know. One of the letters that we got in uh, that, that this viewer wants a, an answer to is, is, if the 2020 election has proven anything, it is that our country is so divided. It is, even, is it even possible to heal considering it uh, being so evident that half of the people in our country think differently than the other half? It gets to the divisiveness. Yeah. So why, why take a position in the church? But I've heard ministers do this. Haven't you? Right. Heard, yeah. I've seen it on yeah. television. And it sends a message of being exclusive. If you're not yeah. thinking this way, you don't vote this way, well, you're not part of the in crowd, you know? Yeah. And I don't believe the church should ever be that way. It needs to have this inclusivity. It needs to have this sense that everyone from every walk of life matters. And I think more, um, the church needs more empathy, putting themselves in other people's shoes, thinking about like, perhaps maybe the person they don't agree with politically, what framed that um, viewpoint for them? What culture did they grow up in? Right. What you know, time mm -hmm. did they live in? What is their experience that helped shape uh, you know, this for them? And then you know, from there, let's start looking at what's the kingdom of God calling me to? Because yeah. I don't believe the kingdom of God is about meat and drink. You know, it's yeah. righteousness, yeah. peace, yeah. and joy yeah. in the yeah. Holy yeah. Spirit. And you start looking at politics in the church and you start getting on that bandwagon, all, you know, all the righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit go, goes out the window. I plus, mean, truly. Plus, you've got the fact that it has reached the point where in some quarters in Christianity, people are putting their hopes in a man yeah. or a woman, yeah. Yeah. A, a candidate, yeah. Yeah. when we're supposed to have our hopes in Jesus. Because, well, let me just say this. This is my statement. There is corruption on both sides. Of Absolutely. The Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Neither one of them is perfect. So if anything, we need to be in there witnessing to these folks, sure. don't you think, on both sides. And if we're not careful, nationalism can become an idol in the church. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And it goes back to what, what you were saying. We need to be inclusive, uh, whereas God, listen, he, God loves you just the way you are, but he loves you too much to keep you that way. Yeah. That there's some truth that I want to take you on the journey of what Christ can be like. Now, can there be healing? Uh, short answer, no. Because... If you think about it, what, what relationship can light and darkness have together? How can good and evil exist? So short answer, no. Can there be healing? Yes. But it's going to have to go back to the church has got to get on its knees and pray. Because short of, I, my personal opinion, short of a revival, short of a spiritual awakening, I don't see mm -hmm. the other side, and I'm saying the other side being the as world. a Christian, the, the world, world. Mm -hmm. I don't see the world coming to the table going, hey, we want restoration and forgiveness. Mm -hmm. What they want is they want, as a Christian, they want you change your views, change your beliefs, and come to our side. Mm -hmm. I can't do that. Mm -hmm. So short of God changing lives, a spiritual waking, I don't see things getting better suddenly. Well, let me ask you this. Then uh, what does the church do once they get up off their knees since they're not going to come to us, you know, prior to any awakening taking place, 
once the awakening taking, takes place, don't we need to go then as the go? Well, I think you got to go now. Need? You got to, you got to, like somebody, I don't know who mentioned it, but we, we need to be going. We need yes. to be making disciples. Mm-hmm. We have to be doing mm-hmm. that. We can't mm-hmm. sit there and wait for it to happen. Yes, that's all I'm talking about. And, and you need to be ready because I think this is just a sign of the time that Jesus is coming it back. Is. He's, He's coming, coming back. back. And He's coming back. Be ready. And, and the problem is, is that we have taken God out of our system. And if if you look over top of the Supreme Court, who's over top? It's Moses with the Ten Commandments, mm-hmm. but he's not allowed to go inside. And we have let that happen. Us as Christians should have stood up and stood up and said, "This this, this land was built on God first. Yeah, and nice. those are the principles. You know, yeah. Do a peaceful protest. Never never involve, involve violence. But we have sat down too long." And we need to make sure that we put God first and God is in everything that we do. Yeah. You know, I, I am board chairman of a large organization, nonprofit organization. And once a year we go to Washington and we have meetings on Capitol Hill with the, uh, the legislators, the, the senators and congressmen, um, to talk about our field of interest and what we would like to see them do in, in, in the way of... Uh, coming up with laws and, and get a briefing on certain laws that are coming up that, in, that, have, that have an impact on our industry. Why can't Christians be like that in a similar manner? We are the taxpayers. Mm-hmm. Why can't we go to Washington not to protest and demonstrate, but to say we are the voting public here. We, we hold the key to your job. Sit down and meet with us and let us tell you about the things that we would like to see take place. Why can't we use that kind of leverage as well and do it in love? I don't mean to go to dictate or to threaten, but to tell them, give them the heartfelt story of Christ and the passion we have and how we see the way the world is going and and it can change. Can't can't we do something like that? The problem is is that we've let the government take over. By, and the reason I say that is that they are supposed to be working for us, and it's not happening yeah. at all. Yeah. I mean, we, we are well, took a step backwards, yeah. and now they're telling us everything we have to do. But as, as Americans, we should be able to say, well, we, we feel you're doing it wrong. Let's sit down. Let's work this out the way it should be, and you know, let us be a part of it. We're, we're not now. And, and it's happening in church, too. I look at the way Paul witnessed to Felix in the mm-hmm. New Testament. Felix wanted him to make donations and the like, you know, but he kept witnessing and witnessing, and he, 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 he never got out of jail. Uh, you know, so he wasn't doing it to try to get out of jail. He was witnessing because he cared about that man's soul. Sure. When do we, when do we get to that part where we're thinking about the person's soul rather than the politics? Mm. It's going back to the basics. It's, yes. it's what we've talked about before. It's going back to that. Can you love your neighbor? Do you have fruit? Are you, are you just a Christian by your label? I mean, all these things we've talked about before, it's coming back to that idea. And I would, I would think that, listen, if we can't be united in our churches, mm-hmm. okay, and then we get into your church, my church, yeah, his church, yeah, where there's not, you, you know, we all have different, you know, ideas here and, and there's some struggle with unity there yes then how can we expect the government right to, to hear all of yeah, these right. different yeah. it gets down to the point where some people say well if you don't baptize the way we baptize right. if you don't do communion the way we do communion you mm-hmm. know yeah. if you're not a part of our denomination well i can't fellowship with you yeah. that's so, divis- d- divisiveness th- that's the problem we we put titles on everything mm-hmm. and you know i I'm a pastor at a Methodist church, but before I you know, went there, I'm a child of God, and that's the way it should be. Uh, when we get to heaven, there's they're not going to be a place over here for the Baptists and a place over there for no, Pentecostal. For the Republicans and the Democrats. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Were you going to say something? No, yeah, I think one of the things that we've gotten away from is that as a body of Christ, as the church, and as people, we're not really praying for the lost anymore. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No. And so, you know, one of the initiatives that we've taken on in my church this year is that we have a big jar, um, and we put a name of somebody in that jar 
uh, that we want to pray for who doesn't know Christ mm -hmm. or who does not have a relationship with the church, a body mm -hmm. of Christ. And that is our initiative for 2021. Is, and we all, we're going to run into people all the time. Yeah. Every week we're going to meet somebody. Right. We're going to fill out a piece of paper, pop it in that jar. We're going to pray for those people every day and lift them up every Sunday. You know, that's what we need to be doing. The it, body of Christ, the church has not been doing that for a long, long time. It, there's that, a lot of passivity we're, we're in the church. Our Bibles either. Um, there's yeah. a lack of urgency within the body of Christ. Yeah. If you think about, you know, people's souls are at stake. If you think about Jesus' return, you know, how can we talk about like loving the world and, and joining that message with Jesus when, you know, uh, so much of the world and tribes have not even heard about, you know, his first coming, let alone his second coming. Mm -hmm. You know, so there's a real lack of urgency. So within our church, we, we said, let's go back to the basics. Let's yes. go back. Let's repeat our first works. Let's talk, you know, what did he tell us to do? You know, let's go after the lost. Mm -hmm. And, you know, statistics are, you know, we know at least seven unchurched people within our own circle. And 80% of people, if you would invite them to come to worship experience with you, they'll do it. Yeah. You, know, you may take a little coaxing. Hey, sure. we'll, we'll go to, you know, Lachas afterwards. Shout out Lachas. <laughs> <laughs> After church, you know, um, or I'll pick you up or yeah. what have you. But we've really got to get back to those, you know, basics. Loving God, and if you love God, you'll feed a sheep. You'll go after the lost. Right. Yeah. We've got to get that sense of urgency back. And and go ahead, go ahead. I was going to say, that and reading your Bible in prayer. Yes. I, I, I know all of us have had those conversations with people. When was the last time you read the Bible? Well, I just had a hard time. I didn't read it. I, you know, maybe I... We have, we have gotten out of the habit of reading our Bible and praying. Well, see, and the other thing would be is that getting into the habit of Bible study and reading your Bible will help resolve a lot of the conflict we have Absolutely. between mm -hmm. left and right, conservative, liberal, mm -hmm. Republican, Democrat, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. What's the word of God say yep. about you know, getting along, about these issues? People don't know the truth because they don't open the book to discover the truth. Mm -hmm. well, yeah, you know, the problem is I've gone into some members' houses and they have this Make it beautiful. Quick. Quick, quick. Oh, oh. We're running out of time. Go ahead, oh, finish, go ahead. I, you know, the, this beautiful Bible sitting on their coffee table. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to see that. I want to see the Bible that has dog ears. I want to see where you've highlighted. <laughs> it's I want used, to see where it's used. falling apart yeah. because you've been in it so much. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, Laying there doesn't help you. We're going to have to leave it at that. And, you know, I think ultimately we all have to remember, just like you said earlier, Christ is going to return yes. soon. Yeah. All the signs are out there and we have an obligation to do this. This is not the Lord giving us a recommendation. He is saying, do this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're going to have the same panel back next week and we're going to delve into this and much more. So be sure you tune in again next week. Until then, I'm Bill Harris. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye. You've been watching TV44's newest locally produced program, Life Questions. Now we'd like your feedback. What did you enjoy about this show and what would you like to see more? Perhaps you have your own questions you'd like us to pose to our panel of pastors in a future show. Submit your questions now by email to lifequestions at wtlw.com or call us with your thoughts. We're able to discuss relevant topics with local pastors right here in the TV44 studio thanks to your financial support. Now is an excellent time to make a one-time gift to TV44 or consider becoming a monthly donor. 100% of your donation stays right here at TV44 and is used to spread the family-friendly, life-changing message of Jesus Christ. Secure donations can be made online at WTLW.com, by phone, by mail, or in person. Again, share your questions for consideration for future shows or just contact us with your comments at lifequestions at WTLW.com. <laughs>